The sun rose lazily over the horizon, casting a golden hue across the fields surrounding a small African village. Birds chirped their morning songs as the villagers began their daily routines. Among the early risers was Kofi, a young boy with lively spirit and an infectious smile. His best friend, a spirited dog named Ginger, bounded alongside him, tail wagging in pure joy. Kofi's family lived in a modest clay house on the outskirts of the village. The walls, painted a warm terracotta, glued softly in the morning light. Kofi's mother was already busy preparing breakfast over the outdoor fire. While his father had checked a small herd of goats they raised, his younger sister Ama sat nearby plaiting her doll's hair with intense concentration. Kofi, don't go too far with Ginger today, his mother called out as she stirred a pot of maize porridge. Remember, you have chores to do. Yes, Mama, Kofi replied, though his mind was already on the adventures he and Ginger would have that day. He grabbed a piece of flat bread from the table, shared a bit with Ginger, and sprinted towards the fields. The path leading away from his home was lined with tall grasses that swayed gently in the breeze. Kofi loved this time of the morning when the air was cool and the village was just waking up. Ginger ran ahead, nose to the ground, following invisible trails and scents. Kofi laughed, watching his dog's ears flop as she ran. They reached the edge of the forest, a place of mystery and excitement for Kofi. It was a boundary between the familiar and the unknown, where he often imagined himself as a great explorer or a brave warrior. Today, he decided they would venture a little deeper into the woods. As they walked, Kofi marveled at the towering trees and the sounds of hidden creatures. Ginger sniffed around busily, occasionally barking at rustling bushes or darting birds. Kofi's thoughts wandered to the stories his grandfather used to tell him. Tales of ancient heroes, magical creatures, and lost treasures. He felt a kinship with those heroes, believing that, like them, he was destined for great adventures. Kofi! Ginger! Come back here! A voice called out, startling Kofi from his daydreams. It was his friend, Kwame, waving from the edge of the forest. Kwame! You scared me! Kofi laughed, jogging back towards the village with Ginger at his heels. What are you doing so deep in the forest? Kwame asked, catching his breath. Just exploring, Kofi said with a shrug. Come on, let's go back. I have chores to do and Mama will be angry with me if I'm late. The two boys and Ginger made their way back to the village, the sun now higher in the sky, casting longer shadows. As they neared Kofi's home, the familiar sounds of the village grew louder. Children's laughter, women chatting as they fetched water, the rhythmic beat of a drum, practicing for the evening dance. Kofi and Kwame reached the village just as the sun began to climb higher in the sky. The hustle and bustle of the village marketplace greeted them. Women balanced baskets of produce on their heads, merchants called out their wares, and children ran about, their laughter echoing through the streets. The scent of fresh bread and spices filled the air. Kofi, we should go help your father, Kwame suggested, spotting Kofi's father near the goat pen. Right, Kofi agreed, though he cast one last longing glance toward the edge of the forest. He could still feel the pull of adventure, the thrill of the unknown calling to him, but chores awaited and his father's voice brought him back to reality. Kofi, there you are, his father called, smiling as he saw the boys approaching. We need to round up the goats for grazing. Kwame, you can stay and help if you'd like. Kwame nodded eagerly and the two boys got to work. Ginger, the ever faithful companion, dashed around helping to herd the goats with surprising skill. Kofi's father watched with a proud smile as the boys and Ginger guided the goats out to the pasture. Good job, Kofi, his father said, patting him on the shoulder. You're getting better at this every day. Kofi beamed at the praise. Thanks, Papa. Ginger helps a lot. As they worked, Kofi's mind wandered back to the forest and the stories his grandfather used to tell. He wondered what it would be like to have an adventure of his own, to face challenges and, and emerge victorious like the heroes in those tales. Once the goats were settled, Kofi and Kwame took a break under a large baobab tree. They shared stories and laughter, ginger resting at their feet. The tree's broad branches provided cool shade and a gentle breeze rustled the leaves above them. Kofi, do you ever think about leaving the village? Kwame asked suddenly, his voice thoughtful. You know, going on adventures like in the stories every day. Kofi admitted, his eyes shining with excitement. I want to see what's out there, beyond the forest and the fields. There's so much to discover. Kwame nodded in agreement. Maybe one day we will. But for now, we have our village, our families, and our chores. Yeah, Kofi said, though his heart still yearned for adventure. But one day, we'll have our own stories to tell. The sound of the village drum brought them back to the present. It was a signal that the midday meal was ready. They got up, brushed the dust from their clothes, and headed back towards Kofi's house. As they approached, Kofi's mother was setting out bowls of steaming stew and fresh bread. Wash up, boys, and come and eat, she called. You've worked hard this morning. 
Kofi and Kwame quickly wash their hands at the outdoor basin and join the family at the table. The aroma of the food made Kofi's stomach rumble and he dug in eagerly. Between bites, he told his family about the morning's work and his plans to explore more of the forest. His mother listened with a mix of pride and worry, while his father nodded approvingly. You have a good heart, Kofi, his father said. Just remember to be careful. The world is full of wonders, but also dangers. Kofi nodded, his mind already drifting back to the thoughts of adventure. As the meal ended and the afternoon chores waited, he couldn't shake the feeling that there was something big on the horizon. Little did he know that his life was about to change in ways he could never have imagined. The next morning dawned bright and clear, the sky a brilliant blue canvas stretched above the village. Kofi woke early, his heart light with anticipation. Today he and Ginger would explore the forest again, venturing further than they had ever gone before. After completing his morning chores quickly, he grabbed a piece of flat bread and rushed out the door, Ginger trotting eagerly beside him. Kofi, be careful out there, his mother called after him, her voice tinged with concern. I will, mama, Kofi replied already halfway down the path. The excitement of the unknown beckoned him forward. As they neared the forest, Kofi felt a familiar thrill. The towering trees stood like ancient guardians, their leaves whispered secrets in the gentle breeze. Ginger sniffed the ground energetically, her tail a blur of motion. Kofi laughed, feeling a rush of happiness. This was their special place, but the boundaries of his small village melted away and anything seemed possible. They walked deeper into the forest, the sunlight filtering through the canopy in dappled patterns. Kofi's imagination soared with each step, picturing hidden treasures and magical creatures just out of sight. Ginger barked at a squirrel darting up a tree, and Kofi joined in her playful chase, both of them lost in the joy of the moment. Suddenly, Ginger froze, her ears perked up, her nose twitching. Kofi's heart skipped a beat as he followed her gaze. At the edge of the small clearing stood three men, looking rough and dressed in ragged clothes. They were dog poachers. A menace whispered about in the village, but never seen up close by Kofi. One of the men spotted Ginger and nudged his companions. In an instant, they sprang into action. Kofi shouted and ran towards Ginger, but it was too late. One of the poachers threw a net over Ginger, who yelped in surprise and fear. No, leave her alone, Kofi screamed, his voice cracking with panic. He charged at the men, but they were too quick. He shoved him aside and he stumbled, falling to the ground. Desperation clawed at Kofi as he watched the poachers drag Ginger away. He scrambled to his feet and chased after them, but his small frame was no match for their longer strides. They disappeared into the thick underbush, leaving Kofi breathless and heartbroken at the forest's edge. Tears stung his eyes as he called out for Ginger, his voice echoing through the trees. Silence was his only answer. Kofi's chest heaved with sobs, his mind racing. He couldn't let them take her. Ginger was more than just a dog. She was his best friend, his loyal companion. He had to get her back. Wiping his tears with the back of his hand, Kofi turned and ran back to the village, his legs burning with the effort. He burst into the village square, breathless and frantic, seeking help. Help! They've taken Ginger! The poachers took her! Kofi shouted, drawing the attention of the villagers. His mother rushed to his side, worry etched on her face. Kofi, what happened? She asked, holding him by the shoulders. The poachers, mama. They took Ginger. Kofi's voice trembled with urgency. The village elders gathered round, their expressions grave. They listened as Kofi recounted the events, their faces a mixture of concern and skepticism. We have heard of these poachers, but they've never come this close to the village, one elder said, shaking his head. Are you sure, Kofi? Yes, I saw them. We have to do something. Kofi pleaded, his heart pounding his chest. The elders exchanged doubtful glances, their reluctance evident. We'll look into it, one of them said finally. But we have other pressing matters to attend to. You must understand, Kofi. Kofi felt a surge of frustration. But Ginger needs us now. His pleas seemed to fall on deaf ears. The elders dispersed, leaving Kofi standing in the village square, feeling more alone than ever. Feeling a surge of frustration and helplessness, Kofi stood alone in the village square, clenched his fists, determination replacing his earlier despair. If the audience won't help, he would have to rescue Ginger himself. His bond with Ginger was too strong to abandon her to the cruel fate the poachers intended. Kofi ran to his house, his mind racing with plans. He grabbed a small backpack and filled it with essentials, some flat bread, a water bottle, a knife his father used for farming. He knew the forest well, but this time, he would have to go deeper into uncharted territory. His mother, sensing his resolve, caught him at the door. Kofi, where are you going? She asked, worried lines creasing her forehead. I have to find Ginger, mama. Kofi said, steady despite the fear gnawing at his heart. I can't let them take her. His mother's eyes filled with tears. She placed her hand on his cheek. I know how much Ginger means to you, but it's dangerous out there. Please be careful. I will, mama. 
Kofi promised, hugging her tightly. I'll bring her back. With one last look at his home, Kofi set off towards the forest, his heart pounding with a mix of fear and determination. He retraced his steps from earlier, moving quickly but quietly, scanning the ground for any sign of the poachers. Broken branches and disturbed leaves provided a faint trail. He followed it with unwavering focus. The forest grew denser as he ventured further in. The sunlight barely penetrated the thick, the thick canopy. Casting eerie shadows on the forest floor, Kofi's senses were heightened, every rustle and snap of a twig making him jump. He pressed on, driven by the thought of Ginger, alone and scared. After what felt like hours, Kofi came across a small clearing. There in the middle of the clearing was a ramshackle camp. The poachers had set up a makeshift pen and inside it, several dogs, including Ginger, were trapped. Kofi's heart leapt at the sight of her. Ginger saw him too and started barking excitedly, her tail wagging despite the confinement. Kofi crouched low, staying hidden in the underbush, and observed the poachers. There were three of them. Just as before, they seemed preoccupied with their loot, counting money and checking their captures. Kofi's mind raced as he formulated a plan. He couldn't confront the poachers directly. He was outnumbered and they were much stronger. He needed a distraction. Looking around, he spotted a stack of dry branches and leaves nearby, an idea formed in his mind. Carefully, he moved towards the pile, making sure not to alert the poachers. Once he was close enough, he took out his father's knife and struck it against a rock, creating sparks. After a few tries, the dry leaves caught fire and a small blaze began to spread. Kofi quickly moved back to his hiding spot and waited. It didn't take long for the smoke to reach the poachers. They jumped up, shouting and scrambling to put out the fire. Seizing the opportunity, Kofi darted towards the pen, using the knife to cut through the ropes and binding that shut it. Ginger, come on, he whispered urgently. Ginger squeezed through the opening and nuzzled Kofi's hand, eyes bright with gratitude and relief. Kofi scooped her up, his heart pounding with the thrill of her reunion. But their escape wasn't unnoticed for long. One of the poachers turned around and spotted them, shouting angrily. Kofi ran, clutching Ginger tightly, adrenaline giving him speed. He dashed through the forest, branches scratching his skin and roots threatening to trip him. Behind him, he could hear the poachers crashing through the underbush. Their angry voices grew louder. Kofi pushed himself harder, not, not daring to look back. The forest, once a place of adventure and wonder, had become a maze of peril. As the poachers closed in, Kofi's foot caught on a root, sending him sprawling to the ground. Ginger yelped as she was thrown from his arms. Desperation surged through Kofi as he scrambled to his feet, grabbing Ginger and running again. He knew they couldn't keep this up forever. They needed a place to hide. Up ahead, he spotted a hollowed out tree, its entrance just big enough for him and Ginger to squeeze through. With the final burst of energy, he dove inside, pulling Ginger close. They sat in the dark, holding their breath as the poachers' footsteps thundered past, unaware of their hiding spot. Kofi listened as the sounds of pursuit further into the distance. He hugged Ginger tightly, relief washing over him. It was safe for now, but he knew their journey was far from over. He would have to find a way to outsmart the poachers and make it back to the village. Don't worry, Ginger, he whispered. We're going to get through this together. Kofi and Ginger remained huddled in the hollow tree, listening intently as sounds of poachers' footsteps faded into the distance. Kofi's heart gradually slowed his frantic beating, and he allowed himself to a moment of relief. Ginger licked his face, her eyes full of trust and gratitude. I'll stay here forever, Kofi whispered, stroking Ginger's fur. We need to get back to the village and find a way to stop these poachers for good. Peering cautiously out of their hiding place, Kofi scanned the forest for any signs of danger. The coast seemed clear, but he knew they had to move quickly and carefully. He emerged from the hollow tree, Ginger following close at his heels, and began making his way back through the forest. The dense foliage made progress slow, and every snap of a twig or rustle of leaves set Kofi's nerves on edge. He kept a firm grip on Ginger's collar, ensuring she stayed close. The forest, usually a place of wonder and adventure, now felt like a labyrinth of threats. They had been walking for what felt like hours when Kofi heard voices up ahead. He froze, pulling Ginger down behind a thick bush. Peering through the leaves, he saw three poachers gathered around a small campfire, arguing heatedly. We need to find that boy and his dog, one of the poachers growled. If they get away, we're in trouble. Kofi's heart pounded in his chest. He knew they couldn't afford to be caught. He glanced around looking for an alternate route. To their left, a narrow overgrown path seemed to lead away from the poacher's camp. It was risky, but it was their best chance. Moving as quietly as possible, Kofi and Ginger slipped away from the bush and onto the narrow path. They kept low, the dents on the bush providing some cover. The path was difficult to navigate, with thorns snagging at their clothes and branches obstructing their way. Kofi pressed on determined to put as much distance between them and the poachers as possible. After a while, the sounds of the poachers camp faded completely. Kofi slowed their pace, allowing himself a moment to catch his breath. He looked down at Ginger, who was panting, alert, 
Her ears perked up and her eyes scanning their surroundings. We're getting closer to the village, Kofi murmured, more to reassure himself than Ginger, just a little further. As they continued along the path, Kofi's mind raced with plans. He needed to warn the village about the poachers and find a way to stop them for good. He couldn't rely on the elders' hesitant promises. It was up to him to protect his home and his beloved Ginger. The path began to widen and Kofi recognized familiar landmarks. The twisted boobab tree, the large rock shaped like a lion's head. They were nearing the village outskirts. His heart lifted at the sight and he quickened their pace. Suddenly, a rustling noise to their right made Kofi stop in his tracks. He turned, peering through the underbush, and his breath caught in his throat. A figure emerged. Not a poacher, but someone else. A tall, imposing man with a stern expression. It was Badu, one of the local vigilantes. What are you doing out here, Kofi? Badu asked, his voice deep and commanding. Kofi's initial relief turned into determination. It was his chance to get help. Badu, the poachers had taken Ginger. They're in the forest right now. We have to stop them. Badu's eyes narrowed as he assessed the urgency in Kofi's voice. Poachers, you say? Show me where, and quickly. Kofi nodded, hope rekindling in his chest. Follow me, I know the way. With Badu now leading the way, Kofi felt a surge of hope. A tall, muscular vigilante moved with the confidence of someone who knew the forest intimately, his keen eyes searching for any signs of danger. Ginger stayed close to Kofi's side, her ears perked up, ready for anything. As they made their way back along the narrow path, Kofi quickly filled Badu in on what had happened. Badu listened intently, his expression growing more serious with each detail. So the poachers are camped not too far from here, Badu muttered, his brow firing. They are bold to come this close to the village. We have to hurry, Kofi urged, his voice tense with urgency. They were talking about finding us. They know we're out here. Badu nodded, picking up the pace. Stay close, both of you. We'll approach quietly and take them by surprise. The forest seemed to hold its breath as they moved. The usual sounds of wildlife eerily absent. Every step felt like a race against time. Kofi's heart pounded, a mix of fear and determination driving him forward. After what felt like an eternity, they reached the edge of the clearing where Kofi had first seen the poachers. Badu signaled for Kofi and Ginger to stay back as he crept forward, his eyes narrowing as he observed the poachers from behind the thick tree. The poachers were still there, now more agitated and restless. They were arguing amongst themselves, clearly frustrated by their failed Search for Kofi and Ginger. Badu turned back to Kofi, his eyes steely with resolve. Stay here, he whispered. I'll handle this. Kofi nodded, his trust in Badu absolute. He watched as the vigilante moved stealthily around the clearing, positioning himself behind the poachers. Then with a sudden swift motion, Badu stepped into the clearing. Drop your weapons and step away from the dogs. Badu's voice rang out, commanding and unyielding. Poachers spun around. Shock and fear flashing across their faces. They hesitated for a moment, clearly weighing their options. Badu took a step forward, his presence intimidating. I won't repeat myself, Badu warned, his tone leaving no room for argument. Realizing they were outmatched, the butchers reluctantly dropped their weapons and raised their hands. Badu quickly moved to secure them, tying their hands with ropes he bought. Kofi and Ginger emerged from their hiding spot, relief flooding through them. Ginger, Kofi called, and she ran to him, her tail wagging furiously. Kofi knelt down, hugging her tightly, feeling the warmth of her fur against his face. We are safe now, he murmured. Badu finished securing the poachers and turned to Kofi. Good job, Kofi. You were brave to come out here and smart to find help. Let's get these men back to the village and make sure they can't hurt anyone else. Kofi stood tall, pride swelling his chest. Thank you, Badu. I couldn't have done it without you. Badu smiled, placing a hand on Kofi's shoulder. We protect each other, Kofi. That's what the community does. Now let's head back. Together, they began their journey back to the village, the poachers in tow. As they walked, Kofi looked down at Ginger, who happily trotted beside him. He knew the adventure wasn't over, but for now, they had won a crucial battle. The village would be safe, and he had proven to himself that he could face any challenge with courage and determination. As they emerged from the forest, and familiar sights and sounds of the village came into view, Kofi felt a renewed sense of belonging. He had faced danger and overcome it, not just for himself, but for his family and his friends. The village was his home, and he would always protect it, no matter the cost. Subscribe for part 2 of this story, as there are still more poachers in the forest and they want revenge.